see words over there? And, uh, the first one's great because it's all done with one. Mm -hmm. I was hoping I might have a camera player, but Caden hasn't learned yet. Ah, so, walk in the Church of England now while we don't say, would you like to stand or sit? It's been taken out of all the rubric. You can do what you like. So that way no one feels bound by the fact that they can't stand up. So that's me happy. I'm doing the sermon from over here. Uh, let's sounds good in tune. set before us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, bringing them to Jesus in penitence and faith. And together we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty and eternal God, who, for the firmer foundation of our faith, allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your Son, till word and sight convinced him. Grant to us, who have not seen, that we also may believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Amen. So we come to our reading. First reading uh, is taken, taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Uh, I will go up to, to the lookout tower. I'll station myself on the city wall. I'll wait to see how the Lord will, will reply to me. Then I'll try to try to figure out how his reply, reply answers what I've complained about. The Lord replies, write down the message I'm giving you. Write it clearly on tablets that you use. And then, then the messenger can read it and run to announce it. But the message I give is wait for the time I have appointed. It speaks about what is going to happen, and on all of it will come true. It may take a while, but wait for it. You can be sure it will come. It, it, it will happen when I want it to. The Babylonians are very proud. What, what they want is not good. But the person who is godly will live by his faithfulness. This is the word. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Ephesians 2, verses 19 to 22. So, you are no longer outsiders and strangers. You're citizens together with God's people. You're also members of God's family. You are a building that is built on the apostles and prophets. They are the foundation. Christ Jesus himself is the most important stone in the building. The whole building is held together by him. It rises to become a holy temple because it belongs to the Lord and because you belong to him. You too are being built together. <coughs> you are being made into a house where God lives through his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I do not call you servants, but friends, because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from my Father. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Thomas was one of the twelve disciples. He was also called Didymus. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus came, so they told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, First I must see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, May peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but have still believed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord. <coughs> Father, we thank you for your word. Touch us by your spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, Habakkuk, like everything we get in the Church of England with the readings, is just a page too early. I want you to take away this thought. I must read Habakkuk. 
Habakkuk's great, he has a moan and God answers. It's wonderful because I don't think we do enough moaning of God. We don't listen enough to hear his response. But Habakkuk has a timely word for now. And that word is, he goes to God and said, look at this, the legal, the law, the judiciary, they're bent, they're wrong. The wicked get away with everything, the poor get judged. The people who are in power govern wrongly. Everything in the world is wrong. And then the good people are looking round, he says, and they think, why should we be good? When the people in power, our governments, our leaders, our priests, are all dodgy. Of course, not me, that's okay. I just needed to make that one very clear beforehand. And, in, and he gets the answer. And we come in just as he's going to ponder. It says, stick around, I'm, I see, I hear, I know I'm going to do. And so he goes up a watchtower and he's waiting and then he ponders on what the Lord says next, which is, write stuff, write it down, make sure there's a witness. God will come, but not in our time. Read Habakkuk, it's only three chapters, well packed, well worth a read. Seventh century BC, such a good book to read. Most people don't even know it's there. So here we are. Our New Testament tells us that the foundations of the church are the prophets and the apostles. These holy men, these pious, righteous men with great faith. And it takes the next bit, which I think you need to take away. For the church is built. I always like the reading from Paul, the topmost cornerstone, the stone that is rejected, is the stone that is the Christ, which is the most important one. We're going to be the capstone because things fall down. But I want you to think of this, if you take Christ into your hearts, the stone that is rejected, if you build your life using this stone, you make it, when you build a building, you put a cornerstone in, or this you build, you look and you build out into the world. As you build up, you watch, and that is the is the stone that keeps the building upright and right as it moves out into the world. That's Jesus. Jesus will keep you right as you move into the world. Jesus will keep you right in your spiritual life as you grow nearer and nearer. <coughs> He will keep you very much straight and level. So, we now know that the apostles are really sound, they're really good and they don't have any problems. How wonderful, my last sermon is about a man I admire because he helps. My last sermon is about a bunch of waddies who were found in the upper room. Here we are, Sunday, Easter Sunday, they're in a room, locked away for fear that they may be taken away. After all, the guy they followed was being taken and crucified. And there they are, they're frightened. And Jesus, with a locked door, turns up and goes, Hi guys, shalom, peace be with you. I always like to point out that Shalom, God's peace, is not an absence of war. It's a peace that the world cannot understand or overcome. Nothing, nothing like that power principality separates us from his throne. Nothing takes away that peace. So there they are, and they all go, blimey, it's the Lord. Thomas turns up a bit later, Jesus is gone, and they say, you should have been here earlier. Jesus popped in. And Thomas goes, yeah, right oh. I'm going to have to see that for myself. Well, actually, that's not a bad bit of thing to say. And then he says, but then I want to put my hand in. He doesn't want to see. He wants to feel. He really is troubled. Is he being wound up? Is it right? He doesn't know. And he's saying, I don't believe you guys. I'm going to have to see it. I'm going to have to touch it. And you know, that's the big problem with the church today. We don't say to God, show us. We don't say to God, let me touch you and let you touch me. We don't have the faith of Thomas. We 
which I think is really rather good, because Thomas's doubt is a lesson we need to take away. As Habakkuk talks about where we are, as our New Testament reading talks about what the church is and what Jesus is to the church, Thomas makes it really clear. I was in a discussion with someone this week, and he said, oh, he said, you lot, you, you go to church, you, you know, and you're so childish in your faith. And the man I bumped into yesterday who said that, really, on Friday rather, really made me laugh because he said, you know, you just believe it all. You, you're like children. I didn't ask if he'd got children, but <laughs> if he'd got children, the one thing I know is that every moment there's a question. Why? What for? What's that? Who? What? Why? And in the end, you turn around and you put your dog collar and go, because I told you so, now believe. You know, we need the church to look at Thomas and be like Thomas. All of us have doubts. I remember driving along with Wendy one day and I just turned to Wendy and said, do you ever have this worry that Jesus might not be coming back? And she goes, yeah, you. I said, sometimes you think, it's been a long time, Lord. You know, the signs at the moment make me think we're getting a bit nearer again, of course. But the big thing is, we all have questions, we all have doubts. When we go to theological college, we ask questions. We say, why is this? Prove it. How does it happen? Why did it happen? And our theological peers and our teachers say, because of this, because of that. And they take us to the word. If you've got doubts, open your Bible. Find the passages where it talks about it. If you've got doubts, open your heart. Ask the Spirit to touch you. Ask God to send you someone who knows. But today, I, I think leaving on Thomas is a great thing because I find so much doubt in the world about the church. And I find so much doubt in the church. We have people who want to take away the deity of Christ and just turn him into a nice bloke. We have people who want to take the word of God. Where it says, don't do this, don't live like that, we want to take it away because if you mention sin, everybody likes it. So we have to say, everything <coughs> you do is right. God wants you to be happy. Actually, God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be set aside from the things of this world and to take the lessons that the apostles show that doubt is good. But blessed are those who believe when they have not seen. Faith is better. But for me, faith has always come from me addressing the doubts. So can I ask you, please, when you have a doubt, don't throw it away. Don't get embarrassed about it. Go and ask somebody. Go and find a dog collar <coughs> or an older Christian. Don't be surprised if the older Christian has the answer and the dog collar doesn't. <laughs> just because you get a dog collar doesn't mean you know anything. It just means you're tried, tested and approved. And many of us should have been in approved school, I see, <laughs> over the years. So here we go. Things are awful. But here we are. My last Sunday, what can I say? Have I doubted? Yes. Have I found the answers? Yeah, because I'm like that. That's why there's 4,000 odd books in my study. If I don't know, I buy and I read. And I dialogue with people. You can't grow in faith in isolation. You can't become a Christian who does the stuff without falling over. So many people don't do the stuff. I might get it wrong. Well, obviously it shows you're not married because if you're married, you'll know when you've got it wrong. That's what the other half <coughs> is there for. You tell each other with love. You say, let me show you a better way. And for the people outside, you say, you were lost, you were broken. I'll be honest, I wrote a letter to Chris Pincher this week. And I said to him, Chris, I need you to understand your predicament is sad. You are foolish. You were wrong. Thank you for being a human being. Let me introduce you to the words of Jesus.
to the words of God that say nothing separates you from his love. And I said I prayed for him, I prayed for his restoration, I prayed that he may be renewed and that he may come to know the power of the living God made real for us by the blood of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And I know he'll write back and he will be kind and he will be, as he always is when I write him letters of that sort. And last time I wrote to him, he said, I value that. I know my weaknesses. All of us sin, all of us fall very, very far from that which God or even our friends and families would want. But if you want to be church, you go and pick the broken, the wrong, the fallen up. You bind their wounds, you bring them God's grace, and you bring them into the presence of the living God. That's all we can do. And I've been really, really grateful for all the years that I've been here. The locusts certainly haven't eaten things in there, the last years for us. We came with four of us, and we leave, including the, the other halves, with eight of us, so there we go, we've been fruitful and multiplied. Josh, Harrison, Rob, not the baby. Huh? Not I'm talking themselves. about the sprouts. Okay. <laughs> we, don't, we don't count, we're old and grown now. So can I just leave you with the thought? Doubt, test your faith, learn, share your faith. <coughs> And when you see the wicked, the fallen, the stupid, the foolish, stop looking in the mirror and in the church and get out and get to the people in the world because they need Jesus made real for them by you. But you may be the only Jesus they meet. You may be the only witness that speaks to them. Just remember Habakkuk's words. Read them. The justice system is wrong, the people in power are wrong, everyone is corrupt, the corrupt are praised, the, the honest are abused and booed. I think I read that in the paper this morning as well. The Bible is always a timely document. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the church is built on the prophets and the apostles, and each apostle brings us something to learn from. Each prophet in their foretelling and foretelling and the example they give calls us to pray for prophetic utterance in our world today that you would make your word known through the speaking of men, sometimes flawed, of women, <coughs> often right, of all who might speak your name. Lord, build your church that we may overcome the wickedness of this world, that we may make you known in all that we are, that they may find all that you are through our example. And when we fall, Lord, may someone pick us up and correct us. But that's the way the kingdom grows. We ask this, Lord, in your most glorious name. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us through power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Intercessions?
happy today. Perfect. For his ministry. For all that he's done. <coughs> and we, we pray that as he retires, he will find joy and peace in what he does. He has given all of us new purpose as we tread the path of life. Sometimes that path can be quite tricky, quite painful. But always we know we can say, Dick, help us, pray for us. And many other people pray for us too. Dear Lord, Ukraine is very much on everyone's mind. It's something that just carries on and on. Dear Lord, send your holy angels across that country. Help the people there who are suffering, <coughs> dying, have no respite from all, all the war planes and bombs that decimate their country. It's something that we thought we'd never see again in our lifetime. Dear Lord, I was a war baby, so I do feel that time is going round in circles and coming on to what you want to do, Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are sick and suffering. We especially ask your prayers for Wendy as she's in hospital and having care and attention. We hope that she will return to Vic soon. We're thankful that Vic's family are here. They're lovely and especially I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. <laughs> Kayla. Baby Kayla. Um, <coughs> we've had times of doubt and times of joy in this actual building. Um, and memories are quite a good thing to think about because they keep us going <coughs> when we're a little bit doubtful. And as Vic has pointed out, doubt is there. It's just how we deal with it. A, a lady who needed our prayers and is now with you was Dame Deborah Jones who died of bowel cancer. She was such an inspiration, such a wonderful person. And we know she's rejoicing with you in heaven. Help all the people to, who have uh, seen uh, part of her life and who she's um, She's helped with all that's gone on. Dear Lord, help 
Christmas tree as we travel on. And we just wish this and Rachel and her family all the joy and love that they can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and to those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So peace to you here, guys, and peace to wherever you are, wherever you're watching this on the internet. <coughs> May God's grace be with you. things you find in church that make you think of people. This was bought because Judith wanted it for something to remember her mum by. So Judith gets remembered in the very last act. Big flag still hang to my side. And I mean flowers as still as you come in the door. All I need is John to leave now and say, bye everybody, and that will be the church as I first knew it, replete in many ways. We have bread, we have wine, we have the Christ who is risen. By the power of his spirit, we be confident say the Lord is here. His his spirit spirit is here. Christ. So lift up your hearts. We we lift to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it, is, right to give thanks and it is indeed right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We rejoice in the glorious splendour of your majesty, for you've given us a share with Thomas in the inheritance of the saints in life. In the darkness of this passing age, they proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on, towards the city of eternal light, where they sing the everlasting song of triumph. And so in communion with angels and archangels and all who have served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim your glory, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in my eyes. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me 
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with the sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may be given us and be in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and live in your kingdom. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we say, Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for being us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who have been God for you, our souls and our bodies, to follow his saints in faith and truth and gentleness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Thank you. 